Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up this week with the creative request. Someone we've had on the channel before, actually, Dan Kane, got in contact with me and said, uh, you know, he's like, you did a reaction video to a collaboration I did with Vishal Naidu a couple of years ago. That was fantastic. Um, so I've been looking forward to this. And Dan says he's released a new album. I was wondering if I'd be interested in checking one of the tracks out. And he submitted Broken Compass to be the song that we check out. It says it's an instrumental and the genre is post-rock ambient so let's dive into this and see what dan has in store for us today i like the heavy reverb on the background guitar gives it a very introspective vibe Well, interestingly, like being lost in your memories, but being lost in general, it's called Broken Compass. Yeah, beautiful melody on top. Love the expansion here. The arpeggiating guitars way out on the side. The really light snare is a good way to build into this next idea. Creates just enough energy, forward engagement without overtaking the section. Harmony on that main riff. Finally get the payoff on the drum. Ooh, we've got some reversal stuff going on though. Very interesting cyclical ideas. Very full, very rich evolution of this idea. The crossfade between, I feel like this guitar is just a little too loud. Otherwise, I really like the crossfade between the octaves. Yeah. Yeah, very cool stuff. It is uh, definitely ambient and post-rock. Very much a slow burn. But what I like is that, you know, a lot of people tell me slow burns are about the journey. It's not about the end point. And that's usually what I talk about. You know, the payoff made the slow burn worthwhile. is a phrase that I've used many times um, with bands who utilize the, the compositional technique. 
But that's usually it for me. That's how I experience them. I'm sort of always waiting for the next thing to happen. And then eventually we hit the peak, we hit the payoff. And I'm like, okay, all that tension, all that uh, lack of, of enjoyment I got out of the, the slow burn was worth it because where we ended up would not have been as impactful without it. And it's in, geez, I mean, I suppose in some ways it feels like a necessary evil for me. You can't get that impact without a slower buildup, but I'm just not usually a fan of slower buildups. So I really like this slow burn though, because at least my experience with it is that it's very engaged with the here and now it doesn't always feel like it's building towards something just that it's building and I don't always get that feeling when I listen to slow burns I usually have the impression they're building towards something and here I just I dug it in the moment and I think part of that is because this isn't a layered approach. It isn't necessarily that we're going to start with guitar and then we'll add bass and then we'll add drums and then we'll add vocals and then we'll add ornamental stuff. Everything seems to come and go in equal measure in large groups. Sometimes we'll remove a few instruments and add a couple others. Sometimes we'll just add a few all at one time. It isn't about this piecemeal one per where that becomes a bit predictable for me. What gets added and subsequently what gets removed, which is a rarity in slow burns, how much of it, what does get added or removed, that's all seemingly random to me from a first listen. It's quite possible I can find the pattern on a subsequent listen, but right here, right now, I was consistently caught off guard. I really enjoy that. It's not so much about what comes next, it's about where is this going. And that mindset completely shifts my uh, appreciation and enjoyment within the moment of something like this. And I think what I also loved about it is that it wasn't straight up. You know, usually when I talk about slow burns, I talk about a vertical line. We go from the lowest point to the highest point, we hit the peak at the top. Uh, and this had a bit more of the roller coaster style storytelling to it, where we had peaks and then valleys and then higher peaks and then higher valleys. Um, and it, it kept my interest from a, a contrast perspective really well. Because it wasn't afraid to bring things down. It wasn't always about growth. Again, it's not about the end result. It's about the journey. And I know this is people are like, this is what we've been telling you for years. And like, yeah, you have. But like, I finally found a slow burn piece, something that's focused on ambience and the moment that was written in a way that just works for me. I, there's a lot of joy that I experienced in the progressive elements of this uh, as the song expands from one idea to the next. And something stems from this that you really can't get too much in a more traditional linear layering slow burn. We have callbacks. Despite being what I think is a linear evolution of the song from start to finish, there's still elements of cycle within it. I can hear a guitar idea from minutes ago that was presented on a guitar. Now it's on a different instrument or now it's on a different timbre of the guitar. Um, and you know, like I said, when you're just layering new things on, you can't call something back from the past because it, it never left. It's not from the past. <laughs> and so the fact that we can dip down and have these lows these valleys against the peaks where we might remove some ideas. And that's another thing too. I mentioned that layers add ideas, but also remove some. And it gives us room to expand on them, to recontextualize them later as the song has shifted and changed and metamorphosized into a new concept altogether. It does generally go from low intensity to high intensity, but there's so many different things in the middle there that while the overall experience is linear, the moment to moment is not. And that drastically changes, I think, how everything can work in here. And it introduces some neat ideas that you don't typically hear in post-rock. 
Now one thing I do enjoy about this is also the atmosphere of it all. It feels... Hmm. I don't know that I have a good word for it specifically, because it is a bit of a combination of emotions, but there is a piece at the center of this that I think is juxtaposed with uh, fear, with uh, stress or anxiety. And a lot of this comes from the multifaceted writing. It's not necessarily that one instrument embodies all of these emotions simultaneously, but it's that specific lines or harmonies might embody them. And when you put those uh, melodies and harmonies together, you get something that feels like both of these or three of these ideas all smashed together. I don't know what all this is supposed to represent. I have theories, but I'm not ready to dive into them as they require extra information. But I do like how there is a sort of peace at the middle of all of this. But there is the feeling of tension, specifically a feeling lost. I had mentioned this right off the bat harmonically. The song kicks off with this, but I think there's also something in the phrasing of ideas that feels like lost to me as well. The idea of having a broken compass, of not knowing where you are or where to go. And I found this most prominently towards the end, and I began thinking about melodies from previous in the track, or even structure, how ideas shifted into others. Not every transition was super smooth, and I began to realize that there is this feeling of not knowing where to take an idea. And you can really hear it in that final guitar melody line. It starts and stops in odd ways. Uh, ideas don't necessarily continue into the next. Sometimes there's some odd transitions as one uh, idea feels like it's going in one direction and ends up going in a completely different uh, direction. There's some times where the guitar just stops entirely, has a couple of moments of rest, and then kicks in with something entirely different. I typically view this very positively. It is one of the cool parts about uh, jazz improv, especially when you look at instruments that require breath, trumpets, saxophones, trombones, flautists. Um, there has to be these points of stoppage. And it's just something we don't hear too much in rock music because you don't have to stop playing the guitar ever to physically live. <laughs> the, the worst you can do is butt up against your muscles endurance and at that point you have to quit. But with, with aerophone instruments, you just have to put rests in there frequently so that you can breathe and live and survive to play the next lick. Um, and so space, emptiness, Silence is a big part of jazz improv, um, but it isn't really much in rock, and it's really interesting to hear it here, because to me it doesn't feel like a natural extension of an idea. It doesn't feel like these ideas have come to a stop, and that this is a point of rest, sort of like a period at the end of a sentence, a pocket of space before you move to your next idea. This simply feels like, I don't know what to do next, uh, I don't know where to take this idea, so I have to stop it, and I don't know what to do next, so I'm just going to take a moment to pause, and, oh, yeah, maybe I can go in this direction. And even that phrase, maybe I can go in this direction, represents uh, in feeling insecure in your decision-making about where to go. Maybe I can go in this direction. I mean, we're taking... <laughs> The, the physical concept of being lost, of having a broken compass, and turning that into a metaphor for where, you know, what to do with music. And it's a phrase I've used all the time. Where do we go from here? Where is this going? Uh, the idea of, of movement, momentum, these, these are all phrases I use frequently to describe music. And here I think it all embodies a feeling of being lost. I don't necessarily think that Dan ran out of ideas here at the end of the song and just didn't know what to do with the guitar. Uh, I think it was purposefully and intentfully put in there in order to represent someone who has a broken compass, who is attempting to make peace with the fact that being lost isn't necessarily a bad thing. There is exploring, there's adventure to be had with it, but it is also scary. You know, at one time, we used to get lost looking at paper maps and trying to figure out where we are in relation to the map to figure out where we need to go. Now, 
We have phones that tell us exactly where we are and exactly how to get where we go. And people can have small meltdowns if they leave the house without it. What if I get lost? The idea of being at peace with not knowing where you are is something that feels very foreign today. And I like how this song tries to balance that. It's the anxiety, it's the tension of feeling lost and trying to make peace with that, trying to be okay with not knowing how something ends up, where something, where somewhere goes, and just putting this one foot in front of the other and seeing where it takes you, even if it's not always the best of places. And that's what the end solo feels like to me. We'll go this way. Yeah, turned out to be a dead end. Oh, let's turn around and go somewhere else. Oh, that ended up being more fruitful. And the solo has these moments of genius to them mixed with these dead-end ideas. And I really like that. And it mixes so well with the atmosphere of all of it. And this is my... I don't think I intended to go into this. But yeah, this is my, my take on the music. What it's doing. What it's saying. I think it does a fantastic job with it on every level. It's about the journey of the song, but it's also about feeling lost. It's about representing that musically and sonically and pairing together some positive and negative feelings about being lost, about having a broken compass and smashing all that together into an atmosphere that tries to capture that multifaceted emotion. Again, alongside trying to capture the feeling of being lost melodically, it's multifaceted every aspect of this i think works well at leading into the next and it comes together into a very cohesive digestible post-rock track it's kind of short for post-rock song but it does what it needs to uh gets out and doesn't overstay its welcome and i will always support music that understands pacing in that regard as well so those are my thoughts dan kane's broken compass what do you think of this track? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about it. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Dan Kane's uh, services. I know he's got Bandcamp, he's got Spotify, a link to the YouTube channel, a bunch of other stuff. Y'all know I like to show love to everybody I showcase on uh, Creator Request. Um, you'll find my links in there, but I'm not going to promote them right now. Uh, Make sure you head over there, uh, show Dan some love, like, subscribe, ring the bell, listen to the music, whatever helps them out and uh, that you're willing to do. If you enjoyed this, there's plenty more. The album came out on April 3rd, so there are nine more songs you can check out and another 42 minutes or so of music. And uh, he has a bit of a backlog too, a back library. Oh yeah, plenty of stuff. If you enjoyed this, there's plenty to to dig into from the past as well. So, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to be checking out a full album Sunday morning at 11 a.m. EST. Might not be morning for you. (laughs) We're going to do the live stream, two hours. Just come on, hang out. We're going to listen to some good music and chat and talk about who knows what. We always get off to weird topics that aren't music related always but whatever it's just laid back and then monday we'll start next week's theme until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos (laughs) 